The beauty about science is it's always changing. The thing that changes is technology. How do you do things? And sometimes the technology doesn't exist to be able to do what you want to do, and then you develop the technology. If you can't do something, figure out how to do it. That required me to have a, a hypodermic that was very, very small and um, a microscope to be able to see the cells and then to be able to put the needle into the nucleus and then to deliver uh, the DNA into the nucleus. And next to me was Larry Oaken, a colleague, and he was using an instrument to actually record electrical uh, currents uh, in a cell. I looked at his apparatus and it looked pretty much like a hypodermic needle to me. And so instead of having a needle to record electricity, then I would have a needle that then uh, would be able to c contain DNA and I could uh, put some pressure into this uh, needle and then use as a hypodermic to put it into the nucleus of a cell. The actually the tip of the needle is so small that I can't see it under this microscope. The needle is about a hundredth as big as a hair, maybe a 1,000, somewhere in that range. So it's a very small needle and you have to be very careful with it because if you touch it on something, it's <laughs> Explodes, so you you, know, you can't just zoom. <laughs> and the microscope is what we call an inverted microscope. It's actually looking at the image from bottom up. Okay, and the reason for that is that we want to be able to play up at the above, but up to see from below. So it was the first time that somebody had actually taken DNA, put it into a cell, into the nucleus, and then shown that it functions. You know, this allows us to put anything you want into a cell, proteins. You know, you name it. And so then that's lit up a, a light bulb, bam! It says, if I could do that, you know, for example, a mouse embryo, whew, I could change any gene I want. Well, I think the machine was, it was the right tool simply because it works. You know, for a while, actually I carried this thing around in a suitcase. And I give a lecture and then afterwards I do a pull out like the Fuller Brushman and show my wear and then show them how to do it. And that was important because, you know, if I develop a technology and I'm the only person that can utilize it, it's worthless. You're seeing cells, you can move them around, and you, here's your needle, boom, 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 and, they, and you're doing one one after another. And I got pretty good at this machine. I could do about 1,000 per hour, work 10 hours, so I could do about 10,000 a day. And so I had Patsy Klein turned up high volume. <laughs> I take a lot of coffee. I'm a coffee addict, so then I'm really hypered up and then it can really go and it's, you know, it's just like a video game. And uh, this is a, an antique, <laughs> but, but it's a cute antique. <laughs> Out in the moonlight, just like we used to do, I'm always walking.